guys i'm naval yamil welcome to my youtube channel in this video we are going to see how you can mount your adls or your blob storage account to your azure databricks let me launch the workspace here So I am into my data science and engineering workload. So let me go and start the cluster. So I have talked all about the cluster, how what is cluster and all those things. I request you to please watch the recordings. Let me start this. Now in this tutorial, we are going to see how to mount your storage account to your Azure Databricks. So let me go back. And here we already have an storage account that is called as an uh, shell ADLS and you have SA blob NLY. So you have put the storage account name. So now I'll be mounting this storage account to my Azure Databricks. So there are a couple of ways how you can mount it. So if I just go to Google and just type you can mount storage account to Databricks okay so you will be getting this doc you can open any of that okay let me open the first one yeah so let me open the documentation related to azure microsoft azure so when it comes to mounting there are a couple of ways how you can mount it so you can mount by using an access key let me show you uh, yeah, uh, I request you, you can come to this uh, link here, connect to Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2. Yeah, connecting to Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2. So when it comes to storage account mounting to Databricks, you can, you, you can do by using an access key. You can uh, pull out the key from your storage account and you can use the access key or you can generate a SaaS token also. And the one of the best recommended method is by using a service principle. Service principle. So you can use service principle to mount your storage account to your Azure Databricks. And these all are all of the notebook authentication. You can use the cluster authentication also. Like you can do the settings inside your cluster. So once you do the settings, no need to mount your storage account. We you can do that. So cluster authentication is also possible. But now let us focus on um, on how you can mount it by using an access key and by using an service principle. Let us do both the methods here. So if you look at the document here, so it shows like how you can connect your Azure storage account by using a service principle. So there are actually five to six steps how you can follow. So first you need to create an Azure service principle. Then you need to create, create a client secret for your Azure service principle. And then you need to grant the service principle access to the storage account. Then you need to add the client secret values to the key walls. And then you need to use that key walls with the backed services offered by the Databricks in your workspace. And then you can use the connect. So uh, let us first do it by using an access key by using an access key and then I'll proceed to how you can go for the service principle. So let me come to my Azure Databricks. I hope now cluster is running here. Uh, yeah, it is up and it is running. Now let me create a new notebook in my account here. So let me create a new notebook here. So I'll just say how I mount my storage to Databricks mounting storage to my Azure Databricks. So I'll choose the default language as Python and the cluster as the shell cluster. So it will open a new notebook. Yeah, so a new notebook has been opened. Now there are a couple of ways how you can mount just now we have discussed. So now let me explain you how you can use the access key to mount your storage account 
so let me tell you how to use that so to use that we need, we are using a db utilities that are the utilities in your databricks so to use that i can just write db utils dot fs dot help let me okay first let me run help on db utils so these are the utilities that are provided by databricks so in that i am using fs as your databricks file systems so let me just copy this yeah so fs will give you all the utilities that are used for the file systems in the file systems there are some fs utilities we will be looking at this later on now i want to show you that dbutils.fs.mount is used to mount your storage account it can be your amazon's s3 bucket or it can be your it uh, azure storage account okay so you have a mount point here so we are using dbutils.fs.mount don't worry about the code so the code i'll just uh, give you the link for that code here uh, let me come to the doc and just type blob here uh, yeah here you can see azure connecting azure blob storage with wasb wasb is nothing but windows azure storage blob driver but now databricks and azure both are recommending to use the abfs that is your azure blob file system but let us do with the azure uh, sorry windows azure storage blob driver so if you just scroll down i'll be giving you this link don't worry so if you just scroll down scroll down here you will have a python code and the scala code yeah you can see python code here so let me just copy this code and come to my azure databricks and let me paste it here so very simple so they are asking us dbutils.fs.mount source they are asking us the container name container name so let me get the container name so your yeah so we are searching for the document for the blob you can connect with the same code by using a adls also by using a blob also don't worry about that you can connect any of that suppose i'll go to a container i'll get a new container for this so let me create a new container here i'll just say that this is an my input container and let me create a new container so i'll be mounting this input container to the azure databricks so in input i cannot see any files let me just upload one simple raw file inside this input container so i have one file in a csv file that is of baby names so i'll just upload this and click on upload so yes i am using an adls account but you can use the same code to mount by uh, mount the adls and you have the same script for blob also so it is asking you the container name so let me take container name this is as input so let me fetch the container name and write it here and then it is asking you for storage account so let me keep this code as it is so that you can understand what i'm trying to do so here i'll be using an container name like input input and storage account name so your storage account name is something like this shell adls tech so let me replace it with this now now it is asking you the mount point so what does that mount point means so mount point is something like you will have this path inside your dbfs dbfs is your databricks file system that is a virtual storage that is given to you by databricks so now what i'll do i'll just say sample or you can give a container name input in that give a sample one so it will create a new directory input input is already there and let me write some with a new name maybe input might be there so let me write input nly okay i'm writing my name input nly and i'm writing a new directory there as a sample and when it comes to extra config you need to check the document again come to the documentation just scroll down and here you have some configuration so they have given that okay this might be your configuration you can take either first or second so let me copy the first and then 
paste it here in in the place of extra config i'm just using removing that extra con and i'm just placing that configuration here but if you see inside that it is asking the storage account name so hey this is my storage account name i'll just copy it and paste it here paste it here now the the problem is it is asking you for the secrets i did not store my secrets in the in your key walls so now what let us hard code this let us hard code this i'll remove all this secrets from here from here i'll remove this i'll be getting a secret key from the storage account so please concentrate guys here i'll come to my storage account and here you have an access key inside your storage account not to the container level to the storage account level here you have an access key you can click on this so here you can see that you have two keys key one and key two you can fetch any of this suppose if you feel that your keys have been compromised someone has stolen your keys you can just click on this rotate in fraction of seconds your keys will be rotated so now let me click on this i'll fetch the key from here i'll copy it and then come to my databricks account here and after this i'll be not using db utils.secret.get we will come to that later on so i'll just remove this put a double quote and paste it i have hard coded the keys here you might say that hey i have the key name i have the in container name i have the storage account name so is it safe that i have compromised everything is it safe no it is not safe but yes i will explain you how you can store your keys safely in your azure key vault and then back it here by using a secret scope we will be seeing that uh, in few minutes now let me execute this i am executing it by just pressing on shift enter and suppose if you are practicing this on your community edition if you feel that whether this code works on the community edition because i am not using an azure databricks yes this code exactly works in your community edition also you just need to have the container name the storage account name and you should have the key for that key so once you had you got a true here wow what does true means true means you are mounted that storage account to your databricks so how do i verify so you can use percent fsls that to list down all the file system inside your databricks in this notebook so let us wait for a second or you can go to the data view here and find out from there also i'll show you both the ways go to dbfs and in the user in the user just a minute in the sorry in the mount point i will have one mount point called input nly don't look at other mount points those are other mount points yeah so input nly i got one sample folder inside that inside this sample i may see that bb names dot csv which we have uploaded in the container called input in that we have a baby names and i can see that file exactly here you can do it by using the percent fs ls command also so that is inside the dbfs mount point let me copy this and execute so there will be all the mount points they are showing but i have given the name called input nly so let me just show you input nly is somewhere here let me copy this and paste it here yeah let me execute this inside this input nly you will be having one sample so let me write a sample and you will find a csp file inside that so now once we get a path then your next step is you create a data frame so how you create a data frame you just write df equal to spark dot read dot it is a csv file then you specify the path from here and and here it is a csv file so by default you will not get an headers so you can give some option called as header and you can infer the schema also because by default csv file holds all strings you can do inferring schema later on okay so now let me use display to give the data frame.
yeah you are getting a spark jobs yeah beautiful so if you op uh, if you display it you can see you got all five records and there are many many rows in that so we will use the dot count to see how many rows are there if i come to my container here and if i just see the data here baby names i'm just showing you the source data here and inside the edit you may see the same number of columns just now we have seen you can see the same number of records there also so if i just go back to my databricks and if i just say df dot count to just check how many rows are there in that so you can find out that there are 52000 rows in this file then you can do transformation and so on you can do perform the transformations and suppose if you want to write this data back to the same path you can use data frame dot write maybe we'll convert this to a parquet file so now you might transform it but i'm just writing it directly data frame dot write dot you can use a delta format or you can use a parquet format to convert this i'll just use a parquet format Packet and I'll just specify the path here. So I'll just take a path that is you can see mount input NLY in sample. In sample, I'll create. Let me put it here. So it will be written back again in the mount input NLY and a sample. And here, let me write a new name here called parquet file. And let me use a mode also, mode as an overwrite. Overwrite. And let me execute this. Okay. Let me execute this. Yeah. It has executed. Now, let us see where your file exist so if i just go back and do a quick refresh let me go to the container here yeah you can see in the input container you got a new directory called as a parquet why because we have created in parquet here so in parquet if i click on that you will be getting one parquet file you can see one parquet file so yeah this is a snappy dot parquet that is compressed so you can see it is 142 KB, but if you look at the source file, can you please see the source file size? It is up to 1.2 MB, 1.2 MB that has been reduced to KBs. So you can see how much the data has been compressed. So this is how we have done a complete end to end solution, end to end, uh, like mounting a storage account by using an access key but this is not recommended because you are compromising all your keys if someone can get this keys to, uh, container name and then if he get the storage account name he can access all my data which is there in the con container yes absolutely this is just for a practice but when you are working on a real time this is not not uh, not suggested so we will see how to back all your secrets in your key vault. We will see that. So then we have read that file and then if you want, you can do some transformation and then finally write that data back to a parquet file. You can see it here. You can convert that file to a delta also by just specifying the format delta and using dot load and give a path. Thank you guys. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. In the next series and the second video, I'm going to explain how you can mount your storage account by using a service principle. Thank you for watching this. Please subscribe to my channel. Share this video with your colleagues, with your friends. Keep learning. Thank you.